Greetings, everybody. Chaplain Bob Walker here, Light of the World Ministries. In John 8, 12, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Get out your King James Bible. We're going to turn to the book of Jeremiah, chapter 51. We're almost there at the end. And even after I, even after I do the final chapter, which is chapter 52, I'm going to compare and contrast physical Babylon with spiritual Babylon in the book of Revelation. Because if you want to understand mystery Babylon of Revelation, you need to have an understanding of physical Babylon. I mean, it's not uh, that hard to figure out, really, when you think about it. I mean, if you want to know the future, look to the past. God always lays things out in the past. And that's the problem with the so-called New Testament Christians, especially those that believe in so-called dispensational theology. They refuse to read the Old Testament saying, well, you know, we're New Testament Christians. And then they read the old, you know, book of Revelation that draws all its symbolism from the Old Testament. And then they say, well, yeah, you know, I don't understand the book of Revelation. Of course not. You pick up a novel, you read the last chapter, and you think you're going to understand what happened in the beginning? No, of course not. It just doesn't work that way. All the symbolism comes from the Old Testament. So if you don't know the Old Testament, you will not know the symbolism of the New Testament. But then again, these New Testament so-called Christians, they don't read the New Testament either. You know, oh, uh, yeah, well, you want to know what I believe? Uh, go ask my pastor. He'll tell you what I believe. You know, John 3, 16, that's what I believe. And, yeah, there you go. So, Jeremiah 51. This is going to be a fairly long one, I think. Now remember, the Lord is not happy with Babylon. Verse 1, Thus saith the Lord, Behold, I will raise up against Babylon, and against them that dwell in the midst of them that rise up against me, a destroying wind. See, Babylon rose up against the Lord, especially when Belshazzar took the Lord's vessels, the holy consecrated vessels and cups and what have you, filled them up with wine and then had his concubines, which is just basically, uh, I guess, one step above a whore. Uh, it's not a wife. Concubines just basically... Uh, well, you get the idea. So God's going to raise up a destroying wind. And I will send upon Babylon, uh, Babylon fanners that shall fan her. Well, you know what? When you're starting a fire, that's what you do. You fan the fire. You feed it oxygen. Helps clear out the smoke and gives it, you know, air so it can burn. And will send upon Babylon fanners that shall fan, fan her and shall empty her land. For in the day of trouble, they shall be against her round about. Against him that bendeth, let the archer bend his bow you know, like a bow and arrow, and against him that lifteth himself up in his brigandine, or is it brigandine, 
Now, if you don't know what a brigandine is or a brigandine, I'm not exactly sure. Let me see. Uh, it's a, a coat of mail. It's a like uh, like little tiny chain links. It's a type of armor. But I'm not sure it's a very ancient old English word. So, and against him that lifted himself up in his brigandine, and spare ye not her young men, destroy ye utterly all her host. Thus the slain shall fall in the land of the Chaldeans, and they that are thrust through in her streets. So Babylon is going to suffer pretty bad. Verse 5. For Israel hath not been forsaken, nor Judah of his God, of the Lord of hosts, though their land was filled with sin against the Holy One of Israel. So Israel and Judah, neither one has been forsaken, even though their land was filled with sin against the Holy One of Israel. Verse 6. Flee out of the midst of Babylon and deliver every man his soul. Be not cut off in her iniquity, for this is the time of the Lord's vengeance. He will render unto her a recompense. You know, when I read this, I, I almost feel like I'm reading the book of Revelation because this is the same type of language the Lord uses when he says he's going to destroy spiritual Babylon. I mean, let's face it. Verse 7. Very interesting. Babylon hath been a golden cup Babylon hath been a golden cup in the Lord's hand Babylon's a golden cup in the Lord's hand that made all the earth drunken the nations have drunken of her wine therefore the nations are mad no they're not they're not angry. They're crazy. They're insane. Spiritually, that is. Babylon's been a golden cup in the Lord's hand? Made the earth drunk? All the nations drunken with her wine? Ah, where do we read about that? Hmm, is there another place in the Bible that is? I bet you there is. So let's go to Revelation chapter 17, verse 1. And there came one of the seven angels which had the seven vials and talked with me, saying unto me, Come hither, I will show unto thee the judgment of the great whore that sitteth upon many waters, with whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication and the inhabitants of the earth have been made drunk with the wine of her fornication huh the wine of her fornication didn't we just read about that in Jeremiah yeah verse 3 so he carried me away in the spirit into the wilderness, and I saw a woman sit upon a scarlet-colored beast full of names of blasphemy, having seven heads and ten horns. And the woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet color. Those are the colors of royalty, by the way. And decked with gold and precious stones and pearls, having a golden cup in her hand, 
having a golden cup in her hand full of abominations and filthiness of her fornication. And upon her forehead was a name written, Mystery, Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. So here's the golden cup. It's full of abominations, filthiness of her fornication. And in verse 2, it says, With whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication and uh, made them drunk with the wine of her fornication. Right? Let's go to verse 6. And I saw the woman drunken with the blood of the saints and with the blood of the martyrs of Jesus. And when I saw her, I wondered with great admiration. Hmm. Let's go back to Jeremiah 51, verse 7. Babylon hath been a golden cup in the Lord's hand that made all the earth drunken. The nations have drunken of her wine, therefore the nations are mad. Same language, people. Oh, you know, I, well, I'm a New Testament Christian, and when I read the New New Testament and uh, read Revelation, I, I just don't understand it. Well, have you ever read uh, the Old Testament? No, because I'm a New Testament Christian. Well, duh. Duh. Yeah, my pastor told me, don't read the Old Testament. That's for the Jews. Oh, really? Okay. If your pastor says so, you should follow your pastor. To wherever he's going, that is. He may not go where you think he's going. Jeremiah 51, verse 8. Babylon is suddenly fallen and destroyed. Howl for her. Take balm for her pain. If so be, she may be healed. We would have healed Babylon... But she is not healed. Why? Because she, uh, Belshazzar, decided to uh, praise the uh, gods of stone and gold and silver and wood. Unlike his father, who wrote the fourth book of chapter four of the book of Daniel. We would have healed Babylon. But she is not healed. Forsake her, and let us go, everyone, into his own country. For her judgment reacheth unto heaven, and is lifted up even to the skies. Her judgment reacheth up unto heaven. Let's go to Revelation chapter 18. Verse 1. And after these things, I saw another angel come down from heaven, having great power, and the earth was lighted with his glory. And he cried mightily with a strong voice, saying, Babylon the great is fallen, is fallen. Now, why in the world would he say that twice? Well, Babylon, physical Babylon, fell once. But now there's a spiritual Babylon. Is there not? So physical Babylon fell. But now... Spiritual Babylon is fallen. Just like, uh, you know, there's uh, everybody that, well, everybody that's born of the flesh that dies, you die physically. And then if you're not in Christ, well then, after the white throne judgment, you'll die 
spiritually. So here it is. Babylon fell physically, and now it's going to fall spiritually. And he cried with a loud voice, saying, Babylon the great is fallen, is fallen, and has become the habitation of devils, and the hold of every foul spirit, and a cage of every unclean and hateful bird. For all nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. And the kings of the earth have committed fornication with her, and the merchants of the earth are waxed rich through the abundance of her delicacies. And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people. Come out of her, my people, that ye be not partakers of her sins, and that you receive not of her plagues. Listen to this. For her sins have reached unto heaven. For her sins have reached unto heaven, and God hath remembered her iniquities. Isn't that what we just read in Jeremiah 9? Jeremiah 51.9 we would have healed Babylon, but she is not healed. Forsake her, and let, and let us go everyone into his own country, for her judgment reacheth unto heaven, and is lifted up even to the skies. Does that sound uh, any different? No. Really doesn't. Revelation 18, 4. And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, that ye be not partakers of her sins, and that ye receive not of her plagues. For her sins have reached unto heaven, and God hath remembered her iniquities. Reward her even as she rewarded you, and double unto her double, according to her works, in the cup, in the cup which she hath filled to her double. So when you hear somebody say, oh, I'm a New Testament Christian, I don't read the Old Testament. You know what? I just, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know why, but a, a, a James Gang song came to mind. It's called Walk Away. Walk away. Yeah. Yeah, I don't have much use for those people, and they don't have much use for me. So, you know, you try to warn everybody, and one day they'll ask the Lord, well, why didn't you send somebody to warn me? And the Lord will look them in the eye and say, I did. But you listen to your pastor. You know, the guy that uh, drove the Mercedes-Benz? That wouldn't give a, a guy that was crippled and out of work a, a $2 for a cup of coffee or a, and a sandwich or, well, or whatever. An apple and a, a cup of coffee, you know. Jeremiah 51, 10. The Lord hath brought forth our righteousness. Come and let us declare in Zion the work of the Lord our God. Make bright the arrows. You know, if you've got uh, steel arrows and they're rusted, well, if you're sharpening them, you're going to scrape off all that rust. Make them nice and sharp so they go in real deep. Uh, believe it or not, I took archery in junior high school. And the coach, uh, he was an archery uh, he got an archery scholarship in college, and he was good. And he said, if anybody can beat me, they get an A for the class, for that semester, you know, for archery. 
Well, I didn't beat him, but uh, we both shot like 20 bullseyes in a row. Of course, his were all in the middle, nice and perfect. Mine were around the edges, but they were still in the circle, you know. And he says, well, you know, Bob, we can do this all day or I can give you an A. <laughs> so I said, thank you very much. So, yeah, I know a little something about archery. Not a lot, but he was good. Let me tell you something. I wouldn't want to I wouldn't want to be doing a home invasion with him with a bow and arrow in his hand. I'll tell you that. So, make bright the arrows, gather the shields. The Lord hath raised up the spirit of the king of the Medes. Uh, the Medes were one of the principal peoples of Persia, which later became the Parthians. For his device is against Babylon to destroy it because it is the vengeance of the Lord, the vengeance of his temple. See, the Babylonians uh, defile the temple. And now, because it is the vengeance of the Lord, the vengeance of his temple. Set up the standard upon the walls of Babylon. Make the watch strong. Set up the watchmen. Prepare the ambushes. For the Lord hath both devised and done that which he spake against the inhabitants of Babylon. O thou that dwellest upon many waters, abundant in treasures, thine end is come, and the measure of thy covetousness. The Lord of hosts hath sworn by himself, saying, Surely I will fill thee with men as with caterpillars, and they shall lift up a shout against thee. He hath made the earth by his power. He hath established the world by his wisdom, and hath stretched out the heaven by his understanding. When he uttereth his voice, there is a multitude of waters in the heavens, and he causeth the vapors to ascend from the ends of the earth. He maketh lightnings with rain, and bringeth forth the wind out of his treasures. Verse 17. Every man is brutish by his knowledge. Every founder is confounded by the graven image. You know, people, think about it. In the book of Revelation, doesn't it talk about the image of the beast? The image of the beast. Every founder is confounded by the graven image. For his molten image, molten image is falsehood. You know, they melt metal and make a mold. And they pour this metal, liquid metal into it. Let it cool and harden. And then you got a, a false god, you know. It's like a statue. For his molten image is falsehood, and there is no breath in them. There's no life in these images. Verse 19. The portion of Jacob is not like them, for he is the former of all things, and Israel is the rod of his inheritance. The Lord of hosts is his name. Thou art my battle axe. Who? Israel. Jacob Israel. Thou art my battle axe and weapons of war. People, let me tell you something. A sword is faster than a battle axe. But for sheer power, there is no handheld weapon uh, well, bladed type weapon, more powerful than an axe, a battle axe. I mean, that tremendous power. And you, who who used battle axes? Uh, not the Chinese. Not Africa. 
One group of people that used battle axes were the Vikings, who I also think were of the tribe of Dan. A lot of medieval uh, armies used battle axes. Verse 20, God says to Israel, Thou art my battle axe and weapons of war. For with thee will I break in pieces the nations, and with thee will I destroy kingdoms. And guess what? All the third world countries complain and cry about how the, uh, how the Western nations turn them into colonies, destroy their kingdoms and turn them into colonies. Like in Africa, in India, China. Think about it. Don't they complain about the very thing that God said that Israel would do? Thou art my battle axe and weapons of war, for with thee will I break in pieces the nations, and with thee will I destroy kingdoms. Now sadly, the leadership of the United Kingdom is absolutely evil, and I'm not just talking about the royal family, I'm talking about the powers behind the royal family. The banks, I guess you could say. There was a saying that the sun never set on the English, on the uh, Eng the the, the uh, empire, the English Empire. Britannia rules the waves, and that was true. They had colonies all over the world. They broke in pieces the nations and they destroyed kingdoms. Now that's true. The sun never set on the English, uh, the British Empire. Verse 21. And with thee will I break in pieces the horse and his rider, and with thee will I break in pieces the chariot and his rider. And with thee also I will break in pieces Man and woman, and with thee will I break in pieces, old and young, and with thee I will break in pieces the young man and the maid. I will also break in pieces with thee the shepherd and his flock, and with thee will I break in pieces the husbandman and his yoke of oxen, and with thee I will break in pieces captains and rulers, and I will render unto Babylon and to all the inhabitants of Chaldea all their evil that they have done in Zion in your sight, saith the Lord. Behold, I am against thee, O destroying mountain, saith the Lord, which destroyest all the earth. And I will stretch out mine hand upon thee, and will roll thee down from the rocks, and will make thee a burnt mountain. And they shall not take of thee a stone for a corner, nor a stone for foundations, but thou shalt be desolate forever, saith the Lord. And guess what? Babylon to this day, where Babylon, physical Babylon sat, is de desolate. Verse 27. Set ye up a standard in the land, blow the trumpet amongst the nations. Prepare the nations against her, Call together against her the kingdoms of Ararat, Menai, Ashenaz. Appoint a captain against her. Cause the horses to come up as the rough caterpillars. Prepare against her the nations with the kings of the Medes, the captains thereof, and all the rulers thereof, and all the land of his dominion. And the land shall tremble in sorrow. For every purpose of the Lord shall be performed against Babylon to make the land of Babylon a desolation without an inhabitant. The mighty men of Babylon have forborne to fight. They have remained in their holds. Their might hath failed. They became as women. They have burned her dwelling places. Her bars are broken. 
Now, ladies, when he says that he's going to make the mighty men as women, that is not a bad thing against women. I mean, let's face it. The armies of the world has always been men. Uh, men just generally have upper body strength over and above what women have. It's just a natural, it's a natural thing. I mean, how many women boxers go up against the men, men's heavyweight champions? I don't know of any. I mean, you know, so, and besides, I, women are not prone to killing like men are. Now, let's face it, most of the murderers in prison are men, or males, I should say. So that's not a, uh, I'm not uplifting men by any means. By no means. And nor am I trying to degrade females. So, all right, uh, let's see, where were we? Verse 31. One post shall run to meet another, and one messenger to meet another, to show the king of Babylon that his city is taken at one end, and that the passages are stopped, and the reeds they have burned with fire, and the men of war are frightened. For thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, the daughter of Babylon is like a threshing floor. It is time to thresh her, Yet a little while, and the time of her harvest shall come. Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon, hath devoured me. He hath crushed me. He hath made me an empty vessel. He hath swallowed me up like a dragon. He hath filled his, filled, he hath filled his belly with my delicates. He hath cast me out. The violence done to me and to my flesh be upon Babylon. Shall the inhabitant of Zion say, And my blood upon the inhabitants of Chaldea shall Jerusalem say. Therefore thus saith the Lord, Behold, I will plead thy cause and take vengeance for thee and I will dry up her sea and make her springs dry. Well, you know what? When there's no water, Babylon becomes a desert. I will dry up her sea and make her springs dry. And Babylon shall become heaps, a dwelling place for dragons, an astonishment and an hissing without an inhabitant. What's this deal about dragons? Well, what is what's the deal with this dragon thing? Revelation chapter 12 and verse 9. And the great dragon was cast out. Cast out of where? Heaven. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan. I've had people tell me, oh, the devil and Satan are two different beings. Uh, argue with Revel uh, Revelation 12, 9. Because, no. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out into the earth and his angels were cast out with him. Ah. Revelation 51. I'm sorry. Jeremiah 51. Verse 37. And Babylon shall become heaps, a dwelling place for dragons, an astonishment and an hissing without an inhabitant. Nobody's going to live there. 
Except for dragons, right? They shall roar together like lions. They shall yell as lion's whelps. Uh, why are they talking about... It's saying they shall roar together like lions. Oh, okay. I know where that is. 1 Peter chapter 5 and verse 8. Peter says, Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour. See, he tries to pretend that he's the lion of the tribe of Judah, but he's not. Your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour. Revel, uh, uh, Jeremiah 51, 8, 38. Jeremiah 51, 38. They shall roar together like lions. They shall yell as lions whelps. In their heat, I will make their feasts, and I will make them drunken, that they may rejoice, and sleep a perpetual sleep, and not wake, saith the Lord. Uh, what do you call a perpetual sleep? Uh, dead? And I will bring them down like lambs to the slaughter, like rams with he-goats. How is Shekosh, Shezhok, taken? And how is the praise of the whole earth surprised? How has Babylon become an astonishment among the nations. Now remember, Babylon is probably the largest empire in the history of the world, quite possibly. Certainly the first. But now it's going to be an astonishment among the nations. The sea has come upon Babylon. She is covered with the multitude of the waves thereof. Is that a figure of speech? I think so. Revelation 17 and verse 15. And he saith unto me, The waters, the waters which thou sawest, where the whore sitteth, are peoples, and multitudes, and nations, and tongues. Symbolism, people. The waters which thou sawest where the whore sitteth, the whore of Babylon, are peoples and na uh, multitudes and nations and tongues. Back to Jeremiah. We just read Revelation 17, verse 15. Now, uh, Revelation, I'm sorry, Jeremiah 15, I'm sorry, Revelation, it's late, people, forgive me. Jeremiah 51, verse 42. The sea is come upon Babylon. She is covered with the multitude of the waves thereof. Her cities are a desolation, a dry land, and a wilderness, a land wherein no man dwelleth, neither doth any son of man pass thereby. Verse 44. And I will punish Bel in Babylon. B-E-L. I think this is just an alternate uh, spelling of Baal. B-A-A-L. Because both words mean Lord. You know, Lord of Satanism. And I will punish Bel in Babylon. And I will bring forth out of his mouth that which he hath swallowed up. And the, nation, and the nations shall not flow together any more unto him. Yea, the wall of Babylon shall fall. I mentioned this on the previous uh, study, but there was a river that ran either next to or through Babylon. 
And the Medes and the Persians uh, blocked it off. And from what I understand, it didn't flow for three days. And then eventually the water rose so high, it topped over and just pushed the whole thing out of the way. And it was just a wall of water that smashed into the wall of Babylon and just knocked it over. So the wall of Babylon fell. And all the defenders that were on that wall, well, they fell down too and were crushed, I'm sure. And all the Medes and the Persians, well, they went in the hole once the waters receded, I'm sure. So the waters were a flood. So not the waters aren't necessarily people. The flood of Babylon. Actually, that was a very ingenious uh, tactical thing that in the military did. Verse 45. My people, go ye out of the midst of her and deliver ye every man his soul from the fierce anger of the Lord. And lest your heart faint and ye fear for the rumor that shall be heard in the land, a rumor shall both come one year and after that in another year shall come a rumor and violence in the land Ruler against ruler. Therefore, behold, the days come that I will do judgment upon the graven images of Babylon, and her whole land shall be confounded, and all her slain shall fall in the midst of her. Then the heaven and the earth and all that is therein shall sing for Babylon. For the spoilers shall come unto her from the north, saith the Lord. As Babylon hath caused the slain of Israel to fall, so at Babylon shall fall the slain of all the earth. Ye that have escaped the sword, go away, stand not still, remember the Lord afar off, and let Jerusalem come into your mind. We are confounded because we have heard reproach. Shame hath covered our faces for strangers. That's another word for heathens. For strangers have come into the sanctuaries of the Lord's house. Wherefore, behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that I will do judgment upon her graven images, and through all her land the wounded shall groan. Though Babylon should mount up to heaven, and though she should fortify the height of her strength, yet from me shall spoilers come unto her, saith the Lord. A sound of a cry cometh from Babylon, and great destruction from the land of the Chaldeans. Because the Lord hath spoiled Babylon, and destroyed out of her the great voice. When her raves, when her waves do roar like great waters, a noise of their voice is uttered. I find that interesting. You know, a great wave did hit the walls of Babylon and knocked over the wall. But the armies of the Medes and the Persians were, uh, well, that was another wave. You ever heard of a wave of soldiers? Oh, yeah. When her waves do roar like great waters, a noise of their voices uttered, because the spoiler has come upon her, even upon Babylon, and her mighty men are taken, Every one of their bows is broken, for the Lord God of recompenses shall surely requite. In other words, it's payback time. And uh, if you're an archery guy and your bow is broken, well, guess what? 
you, you don't have a weapon. You got nothing. Verse 57. And I will make drunk her princes and her wise men, her captains and her rulers and her mighty men, and they shall sleep a perpetual sleep. You know, they're dead. And not wake, saith the king, whose name is the Lord of hosts. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, the broad walls of Babylon shall be utterly broken. The broad walls of Babylon shall be utterly broken and her high gates shall be burned with fire and the people shall labor in vain and the folk in the fire and they shall be weary. I'm not sure if it was Babylon or not, but I heard the walls of Babylon were so thick that at the top of the wall that two different chariots could uh, ride side by side. Verse 59. The word which Jeremiah the prophet commanded Sariah, the son of Neriah, the son of Masalah, when he went with Zedekiah, the king of Judah, into Babylon in the fourth year of his reign, and this Sarah was a quiet prince. So Jeremiah write, wrote, so Jeremiah wrote in a book all the evil that should come upon Babylon, even all these words that are written against Babylon. So according to verse 59, Jeremiah wrote this stuff before, long before uh, the 70 years were up. So, all right, so even all these words that are written against Babylon, verse 61, and Jeremiah said to Sariah, when thou comest to Babylon and shalt see, and shalt read all these words. Then shalt thou say, O Lord, thou hast spoken against this place to cut it off, that none shall remain in it, neither man nor beast, but that it shall be desolate forever. And it shall be, when thou hast made an end of reading this book, that thou shalt bind a stone to it and cast it into the midst of Euphrates. And thou shalt say, Thus shall Babylon sink, and shall not rise from the evil that I will bring upon her, and they shall be weary. Thus far are the words of Jeremiah. And that concludes Jeremiah chapter 51. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor to God the Father and His only begotten Son, Jesus, who is the Christ, the Lamb of God slain from the foundation of the world. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor. In Jesus' name, amen.